the final ayah, which is chapter 25, verse number 74. This ayah highlights the relationship the human being should have when it comes to marriage. And it's an ayah of great importance because we have been recommended by our ulama to recite this ayah if we are looking to get married. To recite this ayah if we are already married for a happy marriage. And to recite this ayah if we have children or we want children. What is this ayah in the Holy Quran? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَاجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا the Ibadur Rahman, the servants of the All Merciful, are the ones who recite the following. They say, O oh our Lord, grant us from our spouses and our children and descendants those that bring us coolness of the eyes, apple of the eyes, and make us the leaders of the God weary. Amir al Mu'mineen wa Imam al Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Is narrated to have said this is one of the most common du'as he used to recite. He loved this du'a from the Holy Quran. It was a du'a that he would utter and encourage others to utter. How is this verse important to you and I today? Please focus on the examination of this ayah before we look at practical reasons why conflicts happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who say, Ya Allah, grant us. Hab lana. In Arabic, hab is not like ata to give. Hab is different to gifts. Hadiya. When you and I give someone something, it is usually because we have to reply or give them something in return for something that they have done to us, yes? If they've been kind to us, if they've already gifted us something. Hab in Arabic means when you give something to someone, they do not necessarily deserve it, but you give it to them. Allah is saying, we supplicate to him and say, Ya Allah, we may not be deserving of this, but give it to us. Hablana. Now, min azwajina wa dhurriyatina. From our spouse, meaning husband or wife, depending who's reciting, and our children, yes? No. Dhurriyatina in Quran is not awladina. Please understand Arabic. Dhurriyatina means our descendants. Allah is saying, when you get married, don't think about your family. You are building an institution for thousands of years. Build it properly. Meaning what? Don't think when you look for a wife or you look for a husband, you want a good father for your children or a good wife for your children. No doubt. Think about generations. Allah says, you are planting the seeds for many, many thousands of people that will come after you. Who will follow your line? Who will continue? Who will be your progeny? This is the planning Islam gives you an eye. Says build this holy institution marriage so that your line continues to be righteous so that you get thawab and you continuously are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why the Quran says Now, in Arabic, when a human being, what? Cries. Normally, tears are of two kinds. Either they are sad or happiness. Do you agree? Sad tears are known as what? Hot tears. Happy tears are known as cold tears. What do you mean? If somebody, for example, is departing, leaving, and we are bidding farewell to them, if a mother is bidding farewell to her son or daughter, they are sad. So the tears is normally hot tears. But when they come back and the mother for example, is delighted and she cries, they are cool tears. In uh, Arabic, when the Arabs used to be in the desert, they used to be sandstorms. And they used to hide in caves in order to protect from these storms. When they hide in caves, they say, I have now qurratu ayn. My eyes are cool and are protected from the storm. Look at this, please understand this. This is a gem of an ayah and all the Quran is a treasure. 
Quran says, when you say, Ya Allah, I want a spouse and children that give me coolness of the eye because they will protect me from the storm outside. Because at home, it gives me tranquility. It gives me happiness. It gives me a sense of relief from all the pressures outside. All the difficulties outside. Qurratu a'yun, number one. Number two, has Qurratu a'yun been used in the Quran or not? Yes, it has. Where Musa, ala nabiyina wa ala alihi wa alayhi afdar salatu wasalam, his mother, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we returned Musa to his mother, what does it say? Kay taqarra aynuha wa la tahzan. It is because when that child was returned to the mother, she was so delighted. Her eyes was cool with happiness. Number one. Number two, Asiya, salamullahi alayha, is also referred to as somebody who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qurratu a'yun, yes, in paradise. Because there is a wonderful verse that highlights what this whole Qurratu A'yun is. If you understand this, then you appreciate the ethos, the philosophy, the background of why marriage is there in the first place. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ Allah says in Jannah, you would not know what Allah, now you would not know what Allah has given you because it will result in qurratu a'yun. Same word as the one that is used in the verse of marriage. What does this mean? Allah wa ta'ala says, sort out your marriage, Jannah is for you. This qurratu a'yun, you are supplicated to Allah. I want a spouse and I want descendants and children that grant me qurratu a'yun. Then the Quran says, in Jannah, you can't imagine what Allah will give you. But I can tell you this, it will give you qurratu a'yun. And therefore the recognition arises that when it comes to the religion of Islam, the intentions, the philosophy, the background, the whole ethos of marriage is to obtain paradise together, is to attain Jannah together, is to achieve perfection together, is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together.